Okay, so last video did pretty well, along with some minor controversy. I thought I was going to be able to do this series without actually having to make a disclaimer, but I didn't know people would take this so seriously. Anyways, these series are to target newer players who don't really want to go down to the nitty gritty detail of weapons, mechanics, and playstyles. But yes, I do advertise how to do this stuff, but this is all primarily entertainment. Alright, just like before, we're going to go through primaries to secondaries to melee, and then honorable mentions. Maybe we'll see. You guys know the deal. So when you say Pyro, the first three primaries come to mind as follows. The Dragon's Fury, the Flog, and Stock. Why don't we go into those weapons in a little more detail and analyze why they come in handy and the best way to play with them. The Dragon's Fury, huh? It came out on the Jungle Inferno update and offers a unique, interesting mechanic that aren't too popular for Pyro. Now I'm talking about it requiring accuracy to reward you for hitting your shots. As you already know, Pyro has many flamethrowers, all doing the same thing, spitting fire everywhere the eye can see, hence the name flamethrowers. Now, the Dragon Sphere is a little different than Pyro's other primaries. Why don't we look at the stats and how it plays in well with MBM? The Dragon Sphere carries 40 rounds of ammo, with every mouse one click to shoot a fireball projectile traveling at 526 hammer units penetrating buildings and players. Once these players are hit originally by the fireball, it does somewhere between 69 and 75 damage at medium range, and between 84 and 90 at point blank. On the second shot, the damage is multiplied by 3, and the reload speed decreases by 34%. Attacking buildings or the tank, or anything that doesn't take afterburn damage, instantly takes 75 damage, and the decreased reload time does not come into effect. So, doing the math, let's say somehow your shots don't connect, therefore you wouldn't have the short interval time between shots you'd be doing 112.5 DPS roughly. But now, let's take that 34% short interval time and throw that into the mix. You'd be doing roughly 169 damage per second. The highest amount of damage you could possibly do per second while connecting your shots is 424 DPS, and that's if you have crits. Because of the increased attack interval between shots, Pyro can do a lot of damage to giant robots and tanks. The afterburn damage for Pyro on all weapons is 4 damage per tick and 5 damage per tick with mini crits. Now, I almost forgot to mention that this weapon has Air Blast that technically shares a pressure tank, so in between Air Blasts, you have to wait 1.6 seconds before doing it again. Alright, next on the chopping block is the Phlogistonator, or more commonly known as the Flog. The most noticeable part about this weapon is that it doesn't have Air Blast, but the Flog has a gas tank carrying 200 ammo and does have a unique mechanic that can turn your flames into crits. But again, before we cover that, let's talk about the stats. The Flog has a variety of damage depending on the distance you're at. To achieve the most damage at close range without its oomph ability is 173 DPS, and far away is 86 DPS. Okay, let's talk about the Flog's ability, and what the main purpose is. So the ability is the alt fire option in the weapon. You must do 1200 damage against robots, or 3000 against the tank to get fully oomph. Essentially the ability is when you fully charge the meter, you can taunt by pressing G, or by right clicking to activate it. By activating the alt fire, you can do upwards to 266 damage per second with the crits, which does a lot of damage to tanks and giant robots, and has a slightly higher DPS count compared to the Dragon's Fury, but not when it comes to crits. The Dragon's Fury ultimately has less DPS, but still outshines the Flog in my opinion because of its ability to take out giants and the tank so much better. I think the best playstyle for the Flog is to wait until there are tanks in the wave before you use it. The Flog is good, but really the Dragon's Fury is better for most things. The oomph ability does allow you to do a lot of damage against tanks and similar health enemies, but still is outshadowed by the Dragon's Fury. I really like using the weapon in MVM, but honestly, I think it's not the best one to use. And some, not me, would say it's most brain dead, but, well, that's up to you. I don't, I don't have any input on that. Alright, well, the last weapon that I would be okay with you using in MVM is Stock. Now, this certainly isn't the best option in my opinion because the other weapons have abilities and their downsides can be nullified by the upgrades rendering the stock flamethrower almost a direct downgrade but nonetheless it's still viable for many situations in mvm but you know the flamethrower up close has a maximum of 173 dps without crits and uses 12.5 ammunition per second of a total of 200. with crits it can do 266 dps unfortunately there isn't too much to talk about with the flamethrower because it's kind of basic like, it's solid for damage purposes, but lacks any abilities that can make it outshine the others. The best situation if you were going to use the flamethrower would be if you're Rottenburg or Manhattan and you need to you need to air blast a giant into one of the environmental death places kind of things. Like the grinder or the big empty hole in the ground, you know? To clarify, these weapons all do the same amount of DPS, and the Dragon's Fury drops by like 4 DPS, but it makes up for it with its 300% damage to burning players attribute and the firing speed increases. So... 
if you were to rank them for my best experiences, it would be the Dragon Fairy, the Flog, then Stock. Okay, so I took a lot of time for the primary, so let's quickly cover the secondary so I can keep your attention. The amazing thing about Pyre is that all of his secondaries, for the most part, are good in MBN, excluding the shotguns and the man melter. All his flare guns offer an excellent burst type of damage, whether you're doing full crits on attack if the robot is on fire, or mini crits. Okay, let's get some of the most controversial weapon out of the way first. So in my opinion, the gas passer is hands down the best secondary for Pyro. The reason why it's controversial is because many players say it's a crutch and it's too easy to use. I agree, it's certainly easy, but when I play man up, I kind of just want to win so I can complete tours and get stuff and not make my life pain trying to use something like the man melter. But let's talk about what it is and why it's good for MVM. So basically, the gas passer is a secondary projectile Pyro uses to throw on enemies, and when the robots in this case are covered in the gas that can also linger, any damage they take sets them on fire. The reason why this weapon is good is because of the upgrades. Gas Passer only has two upgrades, the Recharge Rate and Explode on Ignite. So essentially when you douse a robot in this and do a small bit of damage to them, they will explode, doing lots of damage to others that are nearby and also killing them. Each robot explodes instead of one exploding doing splash to the others. Alright, next up is the Flare Gun. This weapon is most likely going to be one of the least controversial weapons because it does take skill. So as we all know, once you set someone on fire, you hit them with a flare gun and that will do 90 damage to the player or robot. The good part about this weapon is that it can be upgraded to be similar to a spam weapon so you can spam the crit shots at robots. It won't be good with crowds, but it's highly effective when doing chip damage to giant robots if you feel like it, I guess. Okay, so let's cover the scorch shot. So basically this weapon is the opposite of the flare gun, with shots only dealing mini crits on the second and following hits. The weapon I would consider to be better overall than the flare gun because it's larger blast radius, but the trade-off is that you don't get any crits unless you get crit canteens or, you know, crits creek medic or whatnot. Alright, now onto the detonator. This weapon is kind of a mix between the flare gun and the scorch shot, meaning it does mini crits on hit, but you don't get the surrounding fire damage. That on its own sounds pretty bad, but its ability is that whenever you right-click after firing the detonator, you can manually detonate the flare. So you can, you know, catch robots with a larger fire radius, making it good for some widespread damage. The reason why I do suggest using this is because it gives Pyro an amazing movement ability. So Pyro can jump higher and travel a little bit faster by actually rocket jumping with this thing. If you know how to regularly rocket jump, the, the, just implement that into your all knowledge and, you know, into jumping with the detonator and then you can do the, some cool tricks with it, I guess. I'm more on advertising the movement aspect on it, however, but it can still be fun to use if you don't want to use anything else. Oh. Yeah, I guess I should mention that Scorch Shot can do the same thing, but you still get like slightly less movement from it, but... Alrighty, so we're moving on to some of the melees we can use for Pyro. This segment is similar to the Soldier segment of last video, where the melee doesn't overly matter besides two weapons in my opinion, but... This weapon primarily focuses on giving you a speed buff while holding it, and can give you that emergency health on kill if you need it. What's that? Yep, it's the Power Jack. This weapon I say is one of the best for MVM because of its speed buff. The health on kill doesn't really play into effect much, but I still think it's good. The only downside is that you're now 20% more vulnerable if you're holding it. But the speed does come in clutch often, especially when there's a bomb about to be deployed and you need to be rushed back. And pair that with the detonator and well, you can become quite quick. Now the last weapon is kind of a last resort if you have some beef with the power jack for some reason. The home wrecker. It's, it's good if you want to sit and defend your NGL game and protect him from spies that are trying to sap his stuff. In case you don't already know, the Homewrecker does have an ability where it deals double damage against enemy buildings, and it removes sappers in one hit. So you can be that Pyro you've always wanted to be. But I'm going to say if you camp your NGL game instead of actually helping your team, you're going to be kicked right away, especially if you're doing man up. Well, that's all for this video today. I know I said I'd do some honorable mentions, but halfway through I realized that I mentioned all the good ones and that a lot of them are scarce and there really isn't a point of doing another segment for like one or two weapons. Let's hope this video starts less controversy as the other one, and remember that this is a targeted for new players and not vets. This is mostly entertainment for you. Don't take my titles too seriously because I honestly don't care what weapons you use, I just don't want you to get kicked from your first game. But other than that, I really do hope you enjoyed. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting from my last video too. I appreciate all the subs and everything you guys have been doing for me. I finally got a video to over 1,000 views, so that's, that's, a, personal, that's a personal goal for me. But... Yeah, if you guys enjoy this, do this. consider doing the same thing. Um, yeah, I love making videos for you guys. It's a lot of fun, and this is what I want to do. So, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Demo Man. Bye-bye, guys.